Welcome to Unit 14, Video 2, Hess's Law. By the end of this video, you should understand why Hess's Law can be used to calculate enthalpy of a reaction, and you should be able to use Hess's Law to calculate enthalpy of a reaction. Recall from our last video that delta H, or enthalpy of a reaction, is a state function. Therefore, it doesn't depend on the pathway between the start and the end. It only depends on the state of the system at the beginning and at the end, not how it gets from the beginning to the end. Therefore, we listed several ways of calculating delta H for a reaction. We've already looked at stoichiometry and standard enthalpies of formation. So in this video, we'll look at the third way, Hess's Law. Hess's Law tells us that if a series of reactions are added together, the enthalpy change for the net reaction will be the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps. In other words, if you run a reaction in a series of small steps rather than as one single step, the enthalpy changes of each step will add up to the overall enthalpy change of the overall reaction. The best way to understand this is to look at an example. Imagine we want to know the delta H or the enthalpy change for this reaction. But for some reason we can't run this reaction as is. There's lots of reasons why that might, be poss might, might not be possible. For one, these reactants and products are all gases, so it's hard to measure temperature changes with gases. Um, also, sometimes the energy changes are just too big to measure. So instead, we might run this reaction in small steps. We're going to call this reaction our goal reaction, because this is the reaction we want to find the delta H for. Here's two steps that we might run in order to get the overall enthalpy change. These are called elementary reactions. They're smaller steps that we can add up to give us a larger process. Notice that if we add these up as just as you would mathematically, we can start by canceling anything that appears on each side of the yield sign, just like you'd cancel anything that appears on, appears on both sides of an equal sign. And from there, we can sum our reactions. Notice in the reactants, we're left with one nitrogen and two oxygens, and in the products, we're left with two nitrogen dioxides. Notice that the reaction that we've gotten as the sum is the same as our goal reaction. Likewise, the delta H for this goal reaction is the sum of the delta H's of the two steps. I've added the delta H of elementary step 1 to the delta H of elementary step 2 to get the overall enthalpy change for this goal reaction. So what actually happened here? Well, in elementary step 1, our, our system gained 180 kilojoules of energy. But then in reaction 2, our system lost 112 kilojoules of energy. So overall, our system gained 68 kilojoules of energy, 180 plus negative 112. This example was really straightforward because our elementary reaction simply summed to equal our goal reaction. You'll always be given the elementary reactions, but sometimes you'll have to do a little manipulation of the elementary reactions to make them add up to the goal. So there are two things that you can do to make your elementary reactions add up to your goal reaction. You can reverse an elementary reaction. In other words, you can write the reactants as the products and the products as the reactants. Notice here we started with Xe plus 2F2 yields XeF4. The reverse of that is XeF4 yields Xe plus 2F2. If we're going to switch the reaction, we also have to switch the sign on the delta H. If 251 joule, kilojoules of energy are released in the first version of the reaction, if we flip the reaction around, it's going to absorb that same amount of energy. So our delta H changes its sign. We can also multiply an elementary reaction by an integer. For example, if we have Xe plus 2F2 yields XeF4, we can multiply that reaction by the integer of, say, 5. This could be any integer. 
that will give me 5xe plus 10f2 yields 5xef4. If we do this, we will also multiply our delta H by that same integer, because if one mole of xenon and two moles of fluoride, fluorine releases negative 200, releases 251 kilojoules, then five times that much xenon and fluorine will release five times that much energy. So let's look at an example where we have to actually do some of these manipulations. Notice that in this example, we're given these two elementary reactions and asked to make them add up to find the delta H for our goal reaction written below. The first thing I want to do is see if things are on the right sides of each equation. Let's start by looking at our first elementary reaction. Our first reactant, 2P, is on the reactant side in our elementary reaction and it's also on the reactant side in our goal reaction. Cl2 is on the reactant side in our elementary reaction and on the reactant side in our goal reaction. So I don't want to flip this reaction. I want to leave this one as is. Notice the Cl2 has, a, has the wrong coefficient, but we're going to deal with that later. For right now, we just want to see if we need to flip the reaction. Now, turning to our next reaction, our second elementary reaction, here we have PCl5 as a reactant, but in our goal, it's a product. Therefore, I know I need to flip this second reaction. So I'm going to put a line through it so I remember that I've done something to it, and I'm going to rewrite it as Cl2 plus PCl3 yields PCl5. And I'm also going to change the sign on delta H to be negative 87.9 kilojoules. Now, looking again at our goal reaction. Notice that in our goal reaction, we have two PCl5s in our products. But in our elementary reaction, we only have one PCl5. Therefore, I need to multiply the entire second reaction by the integer 2, giving me 2 Cl2, 2 PCl3, and 2 PCl5. Likewise, I need to multiply my delta H by 2 because we're now releasing twice as much energy, so this would give me a delta H of 175.8 kilojoules. Now it looks to me like everything is in order. So let's see if our reaction adds up to the goal. I'm going to start by canceling anything that appears on both sides. So we see that we have 2 PCL3 here and 2 PCL3 here, so I can get rid of those. Now what's left? Well, I have 2P, I'll carry that down. I have 3Cl and another 2Cl, which gives me 5Cl2. And finally, I have 2 PCl5. Notice that this matches my goal reaction. Therefore, I've manipulated the equations correctly. And I can finish off by simply adding our delta H's. So we had negative 574 plus negative 175.8, which gives me negative 749.8 kilojoules. This is the delta H for my goal reaction. Here's one to try on your own. Notice this one has three elementary steps. Everything works the same way, you just have a third step to deal with. Pause the video here and work this out on paper. When you come back, I'll reveal the answer. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. You needed to double the first reaction and the third reaction, and you needed to flip the second reaction in order to get them to add up. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at why Hess's Law can be used to calculate enthalpy of a reaction. And we learned how to use Hess's Law to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction. We saw that we can flip elementary steps or multiply elementary steps by an integer in order to get them to add up to our goal reaction.